Welcome back to Turbulent Beauty. In this episode, we focus on a powerful and heartfelt journey of a mother's acceptance of her trans son. Get ready to hear an inspiring story of love, resilience, and the power of unconditional acceptance. Today's guest is one of the first people at work that I shared the idea about starting this podcast. As we were talking about the direction I thought the podcast could go, she shared with me her journey with her trans son when she was going through that early tumultuous time of self-discovery and acceptance that she could have found a resource like this. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. We're really happy to have you here today. Thanks. I'm really glad to be here today. I know that you have listened to the first episode when my co-host Britt and I were talking about identity. You had mentioned that one of the things that caught your attention was when she said, when one of these things was not like the other. Can you share with us what was so special about this comment? Yes, I love that comment. When I heard Britt say that, it was like a, a light bulb went off. This is what I've been trying to articulate for years now. One of these pictures or versions of my life is not like the other picture or version that I had of my life. My journey to accepting my son transitioning from my daughter was really long and hard. This started when he was 15 and he is now 28. During that time, we didn't speak for two, maybe even almost three years. So it's a long and hard journey. I'll, sh I'll just share a little bit about that process and why the comment, one of these things is not like the other, really resonated with me. My trans son, he's my oldest. When I was pregnant with him, I might say her because at the time I was pregnant with her, I was positive that I was having a little girl. This is back in the day, like before ultrasounds, I just knew in my gut that I was having a girl. I never had those feelings with my other two pregnancies. You can maybe imagine how hard that was then for me when she started saying that she was a boy that's not what my identity is. A mom was. I have four kids, one stepson, and three of my own natural born kids, two girls, and a son. I gave birth to two daughters and one son. When AJ started telling me that he was a boy that didn't fit with my identity, my picture for my life as a mom. And it was when I started to accept the reality that I have a trans child, my daughter that I knew was a little girl when I was pregnant with her is actually a son. And I am his mom. As I wrestled with my own identity, accepting his identity and began introducing myself as I have two boys and one girl, not two girls and one boy. That's when things started to feel right. And then slowly, as I was able to accept that as my new identity as his mom, a boy, not a girl, that's one of the things where we were able to start repairing back on the path of talking again and repairing our relationship. I had to recognize that the process of accepting my son as my son, I had to also grieve the loss of my daughter, that part of my identity as a mom, and allow myself to grieve that. This whole, I have a son and not a daughter, new picture that I was coming to terms with started to feel really good when I was able to have that as my identity. Then the things started to fit. Things were okay. Another part, too, that didn't feel right to me was I was very involved with Christianity and Bible study and this whole picture of I have a trans son didn't fit with my picture of how things were supposed to be quote unquote what Christianity teaches that time being very important to me it just touched my heart when you said Brett, one of these things is not like the other I'm like yeah I've lived for that I know what it means to not feel quite right with how something is the reality and how the picture you thought you had of yourself. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Lisa. That's so touching on so many different ways. And I can't imagine that processing at times. I'm really appreciative that you're comfortable in sharing that story with us here. And I think what I'm hearing a theme, and I couldn't quite get to it last time, in addition to saying one thing is not like the other, that healing that comes with integrating the new self, not just acknowledging, but integrating. And that, that sounds like what you're alluding to. Would you agree or? Yeah, exactly. So it's one thing to accept it and it's a whole nother thing to integrate it and then live that new reality, right? And so when I started to be okay with introducing myself or, or this part of my identity, I have two boys and one daughter. 
not two daughters and one boy. That was like the first step saying it. My son shared with me that one of the biggest things for him when he realized that, oh, mom gets this, she's really making an effort is I changed his name in my phone context from Allison to AJ. And he was like, oh, and I still mess up. I still sometimes call him Allison. He's okay with that. And it's just this process of both of us recognizing that we're we're working towards this new place, this new relationship. And at this point, I, I am very comfortable calling him AJ. And if you met him today, you would see a boy. And I see him that way. So accepting it's the first step, but then living with that and making that your new reality is a whole nother piece. Yeah. And all those little things, they are a big deal. Yeah. You brought up your religious background, being Christianity, and how that created a misalignment with your previous identity and your transition with your son. Can you elaborate on what that means or can you specify some of the resistance that you felt? Yeah, definite misalignment. And looking back, it is being so involved in that Christian viewpoint, outlook, culture, if you will, that was one of the largest things that was creating so much turmoil for me because I couldn't rectify this new identity of me. I have a trans son didn't fit with the Christian world. When I began to realize how not in line I was feeling and realizing more and more that It was the Christian teachings that were creating this turmoil. What I was trying to cling to in the Christian world because I thought I should, that was the actual problem. That was what was creating the divide and the hate in this horrible time when my beautiful child that needed to be loved and accepted by me without judgment, and that judgment so easily creeps in when you're walking around calling yourself a Christian. It was actually the process of me wrestling with new identity for me and for him, that process was one of the key things that started me realizing that I wanted nothing to do with a world where you have to adhere to certain morals and values. God only makes male and female. This is right. This is wrong. This is black. This is white. And just pray for him or love the sinner, hate the sin, all of these things, right? I can go on and on. But the bottom line is holding to those values was what was creating the turmoil and the divide. And when I let those go, I literally felt a huge weight of relief off my shoulders. I'm like, oh, I am free from that. I'm free to love my son for the beautiful soul that he is and not have that pressure of fitting into a certain worldview, a certain structure with wrong versus right. Amen for letting that go. There's a lot there. And yeah. um, one of the things that you mentioned, that freedom to love your son, that for almost three years, you two didn't speak. And once you started to feel that freedom to love your son, how did you approach crossing the chasm that was between the two of you? How did you reach out to him to let him know where you were and, and fixing this big rift that was between the two of you? Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, I was just really honest and open with him, reflecting back on that whole phase of my life. I don't really know where that desire to be part of that Christian group was coming from necessarily for me. What need was it fulfilling for me? That's work I'm still doing, reflecting back, like why I grabbed so hard onto that. And so I was just really honest and open with AJ, with with all my kids actually about, wow, I'm not quite sure what that was all about. But what I recognize is that it created a lot of divide and a lot of judgment. That's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to live that way. It literally breaks my heart when I hear stories of Christian parents no longer speaking to their children because they're trans or gay. That is not the message of Christianity. So I was honest and open with him. And that was the start. We gradually just started to get together for dinner or lunch or something and just have really good conversations and we both were doing some counseling at the time separately and then did a little bit together him sharing with me that when he first started transitioning he was wrestling with his identity for many years before I was aware of it so he had some time to come to terms with it or present it himself as male but then he was wanting me to accept it immediately and for him to recognize that I need some time to accept his new identity that was key 
and he gave me permission to grieve the loss of my daughter. So that was a start. It was just being open and honest and having conversation about where we were both coming from. And I just told him like not talking to him for three years was the worst part of being a mom that I've had in my 28 years of being a mom, not knowing how your child is doing and knowing that there's this rift in your relationship. I'm like, what can I do to fix it? Starting with me. Yeah. Britt and I were talking about that a little bit in our last episode about that coming out process. And we have been going through that change in the, the thoughts around it for years before we bring it to our family members. And then we often struggle early on with wanting that immediate acceptance and not giving folks the opportunity to grieve the loss of the life that they had imagined for their children or their spouse or their loved ones. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think that wanting that acceptance is okay. That immediate. Oh, for sure. I can totally understand that. And I didn't hold that against AJ. My child needed to feel loved and accepted by me. That's a basic need for any human, especially child to parent. You want your parents' approval. So recognizing that I didn't do that for him for a long time was difficult, but he's thankfully very forgiving and willing to move forward. So how is your relationship today? It's good. We often don't talk about that three-year time. We don't want to bring up hard stuff unnecessarily once in a while if we feel like something is not yet resolved. but. I would say we've quote unquote buried the hatchet <laughs> and are focused on what the future looks like and our relationship. And I'm proud to say that I have a son. This is my son. Nice. I, I think what we're trying to do here is to get a lot of different stories and, and a lot of different voices. We're trying to acknowledge the human in general. I was talking to Jill the other day and, and we were talking about how those family members that go in the trenches with us as we grow. And we become the next best version of ourselves, whether it's sexuality, a transition, a job, a parent, whatever it is, they're your roots. They're so important. And I can't tell you how thankful I am to have you on here today for someone to hear your voice and hear your side of it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for saying that. I'm, I'm really glad to be able to share a little bit of my story. I wish it could have been a more immediate acceptance for me. But going through that really hard, tumultuous time, that's where the growth occurs, right? I'm grateful for the turbulence now. Because look at the beauty that was created in the life that you have today. <laughs> yeah, we actually have a very authentic relationship now. And I hope he doesn't feel like he needs to fit a certain mold to be worthy of my approval. That's a beautiful statement to end on because for all of us that are not like the other, there isn't necessarily a mold to try to fit into and maybe getting out of that thinking that there's one way of being and how we can offer acceptance to people that think differently than us or that are different than us and being able to provide safe space for people to find their authentic selves. Thank you, Lisa, for being here today and, and sharing some of your story. Thank you for having me. As we wrap up today, always remember that within the turbulence of life, there is an extraordinary beauty waiting to be discovered. Embrace it, celebrate it, and share it with the world. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing, leaving a review, or sharing with your friends and family. Your support helps amplify these voices and ensures that the Turbulent Beauty community continues to grow. Stay connected with us on Instagram at turbulentbeauty23 to be a part of the ongoing conversation. We would love to hear your thoughts, stories, and suggestions for future episodes. Thank you for being a part of Turbulent Beauty. See you next time.